Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and I'm the developer of Infranotus, a tool that can visualize and analyze any text as a knowledge graph and detect the main topics inside, the main concepts, and, and also show the connections and gaps between them so that you can use this knowledge graph to generate some new interesting ideas by identifying those gaps and generating some interesting questions and ideas that can bridge them together and hopefully help you develop your discourse further. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the different features of Infranodus user interface because I was asked by a lot of users to show what the different buttons mean and how you can use them in your workflow, just going through them step by step. So if you already use Infranodus, I hope it will be really useful for you to understand uh, how it works and maybe discover some new features that you didn't know about. And if you don't use it yet, uh, it could be interesting for you uh, to see what is the general functionality of this tool and how you can use it to derive meaningful insights from your data. So let's get into it. First of all, I will explain how Infranodus visualizes the text, if you don't know this already. Basically, text uh, takes any discourse, like here I have my own book, which I'm working on at the moment, and every word is represented as a node in the graph, and every co-occurrence of those words is a connection. It's pretty simple in this way. I always like to make this analogy that it's like a social network of words. So if the words were the people, uh, we see which words like to hang out together. So for example, we see that the word scale is quite prominent. It's an important person in this word social network. It likes to hang out with the word term, for instance, and focus as well, and pattern. And if we take something like here, emerge, we see that it likes to hang out with the word center and so on. So this representation of a text as a social network gives us a very good idea about the patterns of how words and concepts emerge and appear in a certain text. And this already provides a lot of insights about its structure, what the text is about, how the different concepts are connected, uh, how it's different from other texts, and also what are the gaps inside. Uh, then, based on the importance of every word, we measure its between a centrality and basically it's a measure uh, that is quite technical, so I'm going to leave a link to how exactly it works in the descri description to this video, but just to explain it very briefly, the better the word is connected on a global level, the higher between a centrality it will have and the bigger it will be on the graph. So, for example, in this case, the word scale likes to hang out with a very diverse range of words that don't only belong to its cluster, but that also reach out into other clusters. So this is why it has higher importance than, say, the word like term, which, as you can see, has quite a local range of connections. So uh, the bigger is the word, the more importance it has in the context of this text, because it connects to a wider range of topics. How are the topics identified? We can see them here in the analytics panel. They also are identified with the colors on the graph itself. So for example, here we have a topical cluster which is identified as scale constructing. So it's about scale and small scale term, short term, long term, and so on. Pattern disruption is another cluster, dynamic variability, and so on. These are identified based on uh, how frequently those words tend to occur together. So if there's a certain pattern in uh, the frequency of appearance between these words, then they will belong to the same topical cluster. And by the way, originally you will just have only their names, but if you want to generate uh, the names for the topics themselves, then you click on sh re Reveal High-Level Ideas, and then those topical clusters are sent to GPT-4 to generate uh, the names for them. So these names, they come from AI interpretation of what those clusters could be about. So as you can see, one is about scale constructing, disruption, and so on. And you can use also this button to show and hide them on the graph. So these are kind of like the basic uh, building blocks of how you represent the text. Then you have in the analytics panel and also in the graph itself, you have uh, all the same representation. So you have the main topics here. If you want to see all the topics, then you can click on this button and see all the topics identified. But by default, we show only four of them, not to overload the graph. And you also have the most influential concepts here. And uh, it's only three because we actually look at all the nodes at the graph and then we find the top n nodes. So it can be three or four or five or 10. 
that are really different from the rest, right? So it uses a variation of CK means algorithm to identify which are the most outstanding, better connected nodes, and then we show them, right? So you can, it's not just the first three words, it's really the first uh, number of most important elements in this network, which is a really good measure because it gives you a really clear idea that this text is about different scales, patterns, and their variability, which is what the book is exactly about. So already this sort of keyword granularity data gives you quite a lot of insights about how the structure of the text is made. And by the way, if you ever want to uh, so, sort of get into the science of how that works, next to each measure you have a question mark, which when you click, you have a full explanation of the science behind each matrix with the links uh, that explain every algorithm used, uh, uh, how it functions and so on. So basically like you can always click and see and then go to our support portal and read more about every measure, always available. You also have the download button here if you need to make a report or uh, get a spreadsheet with all these insights, then, then you can click download and then it exports all the topics. And if you want to see the full table, if you're more into this kind of technical representations, you can also click here and see the full table with all the topical clusters, all the percentages and so on. So this is also really useful as well. Now, in the main topics, you also have these measures of how important those topics are. So this percentage, it basically takes between the centrality or influence of all the terms that are contained in this topic and calculates their sum and then looks uh, how big it is relative to the whole graph. So for example, the total influence of the terms found in these topics is 24%. Uh, so they take actually quite a lot of importance, but there is only 24 terms in this topic. So for example, look at the difference here. You have dynamic variability where we have 21 uh, concepts inside, but the influence is almost twice less. Why? Because if you click on scale, you will see that it includes a very important uh, word scale, which has a higher relevance than the word variability, you see, uh, and it also kind of reaches out into other clusters, whereas if you click on dynamic variability, you will see that it's quite peripheral. So it does have an important word inside and it has influence, but it's at the periphery of the network, so it's not as central. It means it doesn't really connect well to other topics inside this discourse. And this can already be a very useful insight if you're writing a book and you decide that this topic should be something quite important, you would say, okay, I actually want to make it more centralized. I would like the words inside these topics to be connected to more uh, important nodes in other topics as well. So maybe this could be an indication that you want to connect the idea of dynamic variability to something else like pattern disruption, for instance, right? And so on. So this is what these measures mean, and they're quite good nu numerical indicators of the importance of every uh, topic in the graph. Then you also have the measure of topical diversity. This is a really interesting measure because basically what it does is that it takes the modularity uh, measure, which by the way, you can have all the scientific re references here of how that works, but basically it looks into the topical structure of this discourse and then if it says, if it sees that the differences between those topics are meaningful enough, if the, if, if the topical clusters are quite distinct from one another, so it means they're separate, then we can say that uh, they are in fact uh, specific enough so that when we click on scale that we're going to get one sort of meaning and when we click on pattern disruption we'll get another sort of meaning. Sometimes you have situations where it's biased or focused. It means that one word or one topic takes too much attention. So in that case, if you want to analyze the gaps, especially in the discourse, you want to hide those terms from the graph to get to the level where it will be optimal. So for example, I'll show you. If I remove the word pattern from here, you see that the topical diversity becomes low, biased. And that means that the word scale takes too much attention. So before analyzing, I can select this word and then hide it also from the graph and then it becomes optimal. It means that the topics identified here are distinct enough from one another. It means I can start analyzing relations between them. 
Of course, you can also analyze re relations when you have a bias structure because uh, the modularity might still be high, but your analysis will be biased towards a certain subject and you might get more generic results. So this is why it will still work, but I always recommend to get text to the optimal stage first and then you can start analyzing relations if you want to get into the sort of like deeper meanings inside the text. If you just need an overview, then you can use the original graph. Here I already touched a very powerful feature of Infranodus where you can select the concepts and remove them. Why is it important? Well, uh, if you just want a general idea of the text, of course, to have this representation where you can see the nodes and in which context they appear is very useful because uh, you see that it's about scale and pattern. It gives you like a very quick information about this. But what if you already know that this text is about scale and pattern? So what do you do? You can select those terms by clicking on them and then clicking this button here, uh, it hides them from the graph. And then it recalculates the metrics instantly for this knowledge graph. So it asks you like, okay, if we make this analogy again with the social network, what if these two people didn't exist? Scale and pattern, they're very popular in this community of words. What if they didn't exist? How the words would be connected to one another? What would be the more important ones? Uh, another analogy is like you have uh, two players. What happens if you take them out? What, what are the other players that would become important then? And you will be surprised, but you will get quite interesting new topics coming up because once you slice off the top layer and you get to the deeper meaning, then it starts to get to some very interesting results. And you can also do that by clicking this button here, reveal underlying ideas or this button there. And they basically do the same thing. They remove the most influential concepts that are shown here and show what's underneath. So if I click, it's going to remove scale, pattern, variability, show me what's hiding underneath. Then I have much more concepts here. So you see it's a much more diverse network. But I can say, okay, remove even those because uh, I know uh, them already. And then I get to the much deeper topics like saturation cycle, moment balance, exploration boundary, flow disrupting that were not so evident from the surface. And then you re reiterate and go over and over again until you reach a certain limit. And then you can get all these words back into the graph by clicking this button here and returning them back into the system. So this is how you would work with this analytics panel and, uh, and the graph. Then another approach, what you can do is to uh, look at the blind spots. So here you, you, you would go to the blind spots panel and then you click uh, on the topics to connect and then you see the topics which could be connected but are not very well related to one another. And then you can highlight them in the network and highlight the gap between them. And then you can think of a connection between. So how could you relate them together and connect them in an interesting way? And you can either do it yourself or click this AI Insight button, which will send this, these two clusters to the built-in AI and generate an interesting research question here in this panel here, which is generating AI content. It's available if you click on AI Insights. And if you like the idea, then you can save it into notes. I really encourage you to use this feature to save your ideas into project notes. And uh, then you can come back to it later when you want to analyze uh, this text further. So this would be how you would use this feature. And you can also click more on inside question and generate some more questions. And if you're done with this gap, with this structural gap, then you can show another gap and another gap and another gap and so on, generate more questions. And then if you find a question you like and you would like to answer it, you can even send it back to the AI. So you click on this elaborate button and then send it to GPT-4 and generate an answer for it. So you use the graph to find the parts which are relevant, generate a question from them, then send them back to AI to generate some interesting responses. If you like the response, save it into notes, not in the graph itself, so you have a separate place where you store all the new ideas that you come up with. So this is how you would use this feature. The conceptual gateways is also quite an interesting element because uh, it shows you what are the words uh, that are at the periphery but have quite an important uh, influence to the network. So you would basically, I'll show you how that works, you hide the text, let's hide also the main topics, 
and then we ask to highlight in the network. So you see these words are at the periphery, but they connect uh, to the important terms in the network itself. And what does it mean? It means that if you want to develop this discourse further, it could be interesting to start from those particular topics because uh, they are at the edge of the knowledge, but they are still relevant because they connect to important topics. So it's like if we make this analogy again with the social network, those are the people that maybe don't know so many people, but the people they know are important enough and they are right at the edge of the of the community, so they could be interesting to approach if we want to get into that community or if we want to connect this community to some other community. And if we think of texts as communities, uh, it means that, for instance, here, investment growth could be an interesting trope to explore, uh, to develop this discourse further and to connect it to something that it's not related to at all, but that could be related to it in an interesting way. So this is how you would use this conceptual gateways. And you can also, by the way, use the AI to generate some statements that would do that for you. So it sends uh, these words to AI and then uh, it generates a statement which would try to kind of like bridge them together and take them, take your discourse to a new direction. So this is how that would work. And then finally, if you reset this and you look at all the words again, let's say I want to read more about resources and limit of resources, I click on those terms. If I click here, I see in which context they're used. And then if I click uh, to relations, I can see what other terms those are connected to. So then you can really clearly see, okay, re resource and limit is connected to reach. So there I get an understanding that when I reach a limit uh, of resources, something new happens. If I go to, for example, let's say wave, and it shows me what other words it's connected to. So for example, origin, I can see in which statement it's used. So I can see the context where I was using those words in the book. And I can also see that it's connected to people and perspectives. So this can be also a really interesting way to explore the relations between the concepts in your text. And then you can save those relations into notes. So I can click here and save those relations, or I can also download the file um, and generate it for me. So this is kind of like an overview of the graph and the basic options in the analytics panel. We have more here, uh, which I'm going to show in the next video. And by the way, if you're in the basic mode, you will not see them. So here we have a switch that switches from the basic mode to advanced mode. By default, everyone has a basic mode. So you would only have these three, three functions uh, at first. And then if you want to get deeper, you switch to the advanced mode and you see more. Uh, and in this ne next video, I'm going to show how you can use all these menu elements here on the left and on the right, as well as the advanced features of the text analytics panel and also this uh, panel here that shows the variability of the discourse. So I hope you enjoy this presentation. Let me know if you're interested to learn about some specific functionalities in more detail in the comments of the video below and subscribe so that you get informed when I release the next part of this video that explains the other features of Infranodus. Thank you.